Hello, and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery. Why are the apps for generating images using AI all so complicated to use? They've got weird settings with words like sampler and whatnot. I don't want that. I want something which is the opposite of comfy UI. I just want to focus, at least I think that's how you pronounce a triple O sound. Anyway, I just want to focus on the prompt and that's it. Nothing complicated like control net or other techno jargon getting in my way. Well, brilliant. What sort of hardware will I need to get this thing running? Well, ideally you'd have at least 32 gig of RAM and an NVIDIA GPU with at least 4 gig of VRAM. AMD GPUs may work on Linux, doing the usual AMD things for PyTorch and whatnot, but as I don't have an AMD card, I haven't been able to test that. The requirements on the GitHub page say just 8 gig of system memory is Fine. However, that does mean setting up an absolutely massive page file, meaning things will generate a lot slower. During my testing, I found it used 28 gig of RAM. It does, however, appear to work in Google Colab as well. There is the link for that. So if you don't have your own hardware, have a go on the Colab and that should do you nicely. Brilliant. So let's jump right in and get this thing running. If you're a Microsoft Windows beginner, you'll likely want to download the portable application. If you're unsure where to download that from, it's where it says click here to download. However, it has been compressed with 7-zip meaning you'll need something which can decompress such files, such as the 7-zip application itself that you can download and install from 7-zip.org. Just like it says there, once you've got the file downloaded and unzipped, use that run.bat thing to get you started. This will automatically download the models for you as well, so no need to do that. And that's it. You've downloaded it, you've installed it. Well done. On the other hand, should you prefer to just do a normal installation using Anaconda, which I'm sure you'll already have installed, if not, pop over to anaconda.com, download and install that, then you can crack open your Anaconda terminal and copy and paste the commands from the GitHub page there in the order given. If, like me, you've already got it installed, then you only need a couple of those commands. You can just cd focus and then conda activate focus. Let's copy and paste that one in as well. There we go. And now I've cd'd into the directory and activated it, ready to start. Remember, if you haven't already got it installed, you'll need to copy and paste those in one by one in the order shown. And then you can just start the app with python launch.py. And there it is. It will automatically pop open a new browser tab and you've got your application up and running. As a side note for either installation option, should you already have the SDXL models downloaded, you can simply link them into the Focus directory. There it is, so Focus models, checkpoints, and I've just created links for the base and the refiner in there. Okay, let's take a look at this UI. They're nice and simple, just a prompt and a generate button. There's, there's also something scary down there which says advanced, but don't worry, we'll take a look at that in just a moment. Well, now all you need to do is type your prompt and then press generate. So there is my prompt and I click generate. It says there, processing text encoder. So it's gonna go through this and it will give me an image which is a little bit blurry to start with but eventually becomes clear. Whoa, you've done it. You're now a professional AI artist and can sell your images for millions. But do you want to turbo boost your creations right up into the stratosphere? Well, it's time to click that advanced box. I know this is meant to be a simple application and it's got an advanced box and that always seems a bit confusing, but never mind. Advanced, there we go. So we've got a number of tabs here. We've got setting, which has loads of options in there. Style, which has even more options in there. And an advanced, advanced box for the Giga Chad brains. But I'm getting ahead of myself here, so let's go back to these settings and see what we've got in here. We've got performance, speed, and quality. We've got some aspect ratios, number of images to generate, a random seed, and a negative prompt if you want one as well. 
changing the quality will basically up the number of steps from 30 to 60 in total, so quality will take twice as long to render as speed. All the other options in here should seem fairly obvious, as with the style tab, again, you can just read and see what the style is. So there we've got a photographic style or a pixel art style or a real estate advert because that's a brilliant style to choose. The advanced advanced section has bits where you can change the model. There you've got base model, a different refiner if you want, also Laura's, and you've got an advanced 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 section which also has sampling sharpness. So then you know we've got three depth levels of advanced here. This is this is too complex now. So let, let's go back to the settings and we'll just change some of these and, and see what happens. All right, so the, the default is 1024 by 1024. I like 1152 by 896 because of reasons. I also quite like the performance one. That seems absolutely fine to me. Two images, because why not? And I'm going to leave the negative prompt empty, meaning all we need to do then is pick the style. Now, cinematic default is the sort of default one. So if we pick another one of this, let, let's go uh, art style graffiti. Why not? Let's have a look at that. So I've Got exactly the same prompt as before. All I've done here really is just change the style to graffiti. And as you can see there, I've got two images and it has sort of applied that style. Excellent. So maybe you didn't like graffiti style. You can scroll down. As you can see, there's absolutely loads of them. How about this one? A paper craft flat paper cut. So just applying a different style here and we'll get two completely different images. Awesome. There you go. So completely different style just from picking one of the styles that you've got available there. That's quite easy, isn't it? And we'll just quickly go over the advanced section there. So say you're really, really big brain and you've downloaded a model from Civit AI. Well, you can go over to the advanced tab. You might have to click refresh all files, base model, then you can just select that. That'll be a different base model. And this time when we generate, you'll get a couple of images from that model instead. Obviously, what would be really great would be to just have a Generate AI Art Now button somewhere big down here, which automatically does a lot of that for you. So it just picks the prompt, picks a style and a size, and there you go. It generates an AI image for you. But of course, this software has only just been released. Still, if you found that fun, then maybe you'll like this next Nerdy Rodent video too.